Hey, it's Tim the Tutor here with Free Test Prep Online, and in this video we're going to review many different ways that we can synthesize amines. Let's start with the direct substitution of an alkyl halide with ammonia. The lone pair on the nitrogen serves as a nucleophile and can attack the electrophilic alpha carbon on the alkyl halide. We're going to do an SN2 reaction and kick off that bromine leaving group when we attack the electrophilic carbon. The intermediate that we're going to get here is an ammonium salt, which is an acid. And as soon as that's formed, another ammonia molecule is going to come in and do an acid-base reaction, deprotonating it. That's going to give us a primary amine and an ammonium ion as our products. While this reaction does give us an amine, it is very inefficient due to the large excess of ammonia starting material we have to use. If we use an excess of the alkyl halide instead, however, there's another problem. While the first two steps in this reaction are identical, once the primary amine is formed, it is more nucleophilic than the ammonia. So now, this primary amine will undergo a reaction with the alkyl halide. This, of course, will lead to the creation of a secondary amine. However, the secondary amine is then even more nucleophilic than the primary amine. In fact, this will keep reacting for two more cycles until all of the lone pairs and hydrogens are removed. That's going to give us our final quaternary ammonium salt. As you just saw, direct substitution of an alkyl halide is not going to be the best method for synthesizing amines. So let's explore some other ways to make amines that are more efficient. If we wanted to, we can still start with an alkyl halide. However, rather than doing a direct substitution, we're going to go through a nitrile or an azide intermediary. Both of these reactions start off as an SN2 reaction as well. As usual, the sodium ion is going to be a spectator ion, and what we really care about is the cyanide anion and the azide anion. Those can perform an SN2 reaction on the alkyl halide, creating the nitrile and the alkyl azide. Both of these can be reduced by a strong reducing agent such as LiAlH4. The alkyl azide can also be reduced by H2 with a metal catalyst. Another way to synthesize an amine is to simply reduce an amide. Now the mechanism for this is not likely a mechanism that you'll be required to know in your organic chemistry class. So I like to use a shortcut to remember this one. LiAlH4 is a strong reducing agent, and that means it's going to reduce carboxylic acids and their derivatives two times. Nitrogens, however, make for bad leaving groups. Oxygen is a much better leaving group than nitrogen because an oxygen is going to be less basic. So when we reduce this, we're going to reduce that double bond O and replace it with two hydrogens. That's going to leave us with the amine. I will show the entire mechanism here just in case you need to know it, but I'm not going to walk you through it step by step. So feel free to copy it down if it's something you wish to know. Another way to synthesize an amine is through a reduction of a nitro compound. It's likely that the first nitro compound you were introduced to in organic chemistry was from the nitration reaction in the EAS chapter on benzene rings. However, all nitro compounds can be reduced by any of these following reducing agents, H2PDC, ZNHCl, FeHCl, or SNHCl. In all cases, we're going to get an amine instead of the nitro group. Since H2PDC will reduce many compounds, it's important to ensure no undesired reductions will occur in the nitro compound. If H2PDC would cause undesirable results, another reducing agent could be used. However, since the other reductions occur under acidic conditions, an ammonium salt will be formed instead of an amine. Treating this with a base such as NaOH would yield the desired amine. One very efficient way to create a primary amine is to do a reaction called the Gabriel synthesis, and that uses a molecule known as a thalamide, as shown here. The thalamide has a particularly acidic hydrogen bonded to that nitrogen. That's because its conjugate base is stabilized through resonance with two different carbonyl groups. The Gabriel synthesis looks like it might be a challenging reaction to learn, but really it's the same three steps. First, we're going to treat it with a base, and that is going to deprotonate the thalamide. That's going to give us a nitrogen nucleophile. We can use that nitrogen nucleophile for step two and have it attack the alkyl halide via an SN2 reaction. The intermediary that we get here looks a lot like an anhydride, 
And what we can actually do is do hydrolysis in base to free up that nitrogen group. If you need a refresher on hydrolysis, feel free to check out my hydrolysis one slide guide video. You can see the products here are our primary amine and what's left of the thalamide. Even though the reaction itself isn't that difficult to grasp, we can use a shortcut to get to the amine product even more quickly. Once you recognize we have a thalamide, and that's a molecule that is difficult to miss, all you need to do is go to the second step of the reaction, that's the alkyl halide. Then you're going to replace the halogen in the alkyl halide with an NH2. If your class requires it, don't forget to draw the dicarboxylate, the byproduct from the thalamide. The last reaction we're going to cover to synthesize an amine is called reductive amination. Reductive amination will always increase the degree of an amine by one by adding an alkyl group to it from a carbonyl. If you've already studied the addition reactions of carbonyls, then the mechanism that occurs when we react an amine with an aldehyde or a ketone should be at least familiar to you. We end up getting, somewhere in that mechanism, a carbon-nitrogen double bond. This is where a new reducing agent comes in. It's NaBH3Cn, which looks a lot like NaBH4. NaBH3Cn is a very specific reducing agent that reduces carbon-nitrogen double bonds one time. Because the mechanism is so long, it's better to use a shortcut to get to the final product. So once we recognize that we're doing a reductive amination, with the dead giveaway being the NaBH3Cn, we're simply going to replace the double bond O with a single bond N from the amine. Any groups attached to the amine should stay attached to it for now. Once you have that drawn, you should make sure that the nitrogen has three things bonded to it. If it doesn't have three bonds, we're simply going to add or remove hydrogens until it does. And then last, we're simply going to draw a lone pair on the nitrogen. You can see that we started with a primary amine with that RNH2. And once we carried out this reductive amination, we added another R group to the nitrogen, making it a secondary amine. It is very common for professors to ask retrosynthetic analysis questions on reductive amination. The purpose of reductive amination is to increase the degree of an amine by one by reacting it with an aldehyde or ketone in the presence of NaBH3Cn. To carry out the retrosynthetic analysis, all we need to do is identify at least one carbon-nitrogen bond. Every single carbon-nitrogen bond on the product is a potential location for a carbonyl starting material. So what we're going to do is we're going to try replacing a carbon-nitrogen bond by cleaving it and putting a carbon-oxygen double bond in its place. If a carbon-oxygen double bond is possible, then that is a potential starting material. Then we're simply going to continue testing every carbon-nitrogen bond to see if it could have had a carbon-oxygen double bond. Let's take a look at the molecule on the bottom of the page. I see two different carbon-nitrogen bonds. Let's test the one on the left. You can see in red the carbonyl and the amine that would have been used to create that product. Notice that with the amine, all we needed to do was add an extra hydrogen to it to replace the bond that it lost when we cleaved in that spot. If I cleaved the carbon-nitrogen bond on the right instead, I would have gotten a different carbonyl-amine pair, as shown here. If we were asked to complete a synthesis, all we would need to do is react one of those pairs with NaBH3Cn to yield the product. If you got something out of this lecture, please feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave a message below. And last but not least, if you want more help or want easy access to valuable organic chemistry resources for free, be sure to check out the notes underneath this video with a link to join our community.